Good morning. Welcome to the course Principles of Economics. Before we go into the detail of what are the principles that we are going to discuss, first of all, we need to understand what exactly we mean by economics. What is economics all about? By economics, the moment we hear the word economics, generally we start thinking about money, we start thinking about stock market. Yes, economics deals with money, economics deals with stock market. But economics is not all about money and stock market. The scope of economics is actually much broader than money and the stock market what we generally think about. So, at the core of economics, the basic building block of economics is actually the concept of scarcity. So, that means we have limited amount of resources. If you think about the society, the society also has a limited amount of resources, but we have unlimited demand okay we have unlimited demand so when resource is scarce there is scarcity in resource availability and unlimited demand then basically the question is how do you allocate those resources so that we can get maximum satisfaction or maximum well-being the satisfaction in the language of economics, it's sometimes called as utility, right? So, that means if the resources are unlimited, then actually there is no need of studying economics. So, the justification of studying economics is basically lying on the scarcity of resources that we need to understand first. So, economics is then the study of how the society manages its scarce resources at the macro level and that is applicable even at the micro level to understand how the individuals they manage their scarce resources, right. So, it all talks about how people decide what to buy, how much to work, how much to save and how much to spend, right? So, when you think about money, money is a scarce resource. We all have limited amount of money, right? Based on our income. And then we have so many things to buy. We have to buy food items. We have to buy our clothings. We have to spend for housing. We have to buy medicines. Then the question is, how do we allocate the limited amount of money across all these demands, okay, so that we can get maximum satisfaction out of that limited income. Similarly, time is also another important resource and that is also limited. We all are getting 24 hours in a day, out of which 8 to 9 hours we will sleep rest of the hours we have to allocate in several activities. We have to work to generate income. The students who are studying, they have to allocate their time in study as well as uh, uh, their games and ports in uh, social media, so on and so forth. So, then it is again a choice of allocating time. Similarly, when we earn, we think about how much to consume today and how much to save for future because again income is limited. So, we are trying to allocate our income between present consumption and future saving. So, everywhere we are facing the problem of resource allocation because the resource is limited in nature. And by resource, we generally mean money, but sometimes resource might be quite different than your money and time. For example, 
let's say you are entering in a barbecue where you purchased a coupon by spending some 100, 200 or 400 rupees. So that means once you buy that coupon, you are entitled, you are allowed to consume as much food as you can. So that means money is not the scarce resource in this context. What about time? Time is also unlimited. If you enter into the barbecue in the evening 6 o'clock, that means you have let's say 4, 5 hours or 6 hours time to have food and that 4, 5, 6 hours time is quite adequate for a normal human being for eating, right? So that means neither money nor time is the scarce resource in that particular context. Then what is the scarce resource there? The scarce resource is basically the size of our appetite, okay? So at the end, then when we are almost full with our stomach, what we need to think whether to take one more piece of chicken or whether to go for some more paneer butter masala. So that means you are trying to allocate the limited amount of your limited capacity of your stomach several among several food items that are available in that particular restaurant or barbecue. So that means the concept of resource is context dependent. It can be time, it can be money or it can be quite different from time and money like what we discussed in this particular example resources basically the your size of your stomach right so basically we are trying to allocate the scarce resources across several demands so that is basically the objective of economics when you think about the firms the firms are also thinking about how much to produce right how much to produce because for production Again, the firms require capital, the firms require some amount of uh, material, some amount of energy, firms need to hire labor and all these resources are scarce. So, firms need to allocate these resources and decide how much to produce, how many workers to hire, right? These are all scarce resources. And then, when the when we think about the society, how the society allocates scarce resources among national defense, consumer goods, protecting the environment and other needs. So everything is important. We need to protect our national defense, otherwise other countries may attack you. At the same time, we need to produce consumer goods and every consumer goods production will involve some amount of environmental pollution. So that means we need to protect the environment and we need to do many other things. So society is also facing a problem of resource allocation across all these avenues, all these activities. So basically in today's lecture, we are going to talk about some important economic principles. That is why this course itself is called principles of economics. That means the entire economics discipline is based on these particular principles. If you are fully aware of these principles, we can easily analyze any economic uh, problem. We can easily take economic decisions. So, taking economic decisions or analyzing a particular problem from the economics perspective requires application of some principles or the other. So, that is why we need to concentrate on these principles. So, we will start with all these principles briefly and then again we will come back and discuss each and every principles in detail that covers the entire syllabus actually. So, what is the first principle? People face trade-offs. Now, can you think of 
why is this principle where is this principle coming from why do people face trade offs i hope you understand the meaning of trade off trade off means if you want to get something you have to sacrifice something else right what is the source of this particular principle the source of this particular principle is basically resource scarcity since resource is scarce if you want to do something you have to sacrifice something else for example when you think about time since time is limited if you want to study one hour for principles of economics you must sacrifice that one hour from studying engineering physics or management accounting or operations and control so on and so forth so we have to face a trade off we will discuss some of the important examples all decisions involve trade off some examples for example uh, let's say go, if you want to go for a party the night before your mid term exam then you have less time uh, available for study you are facing a trade off whether to study or go for a party just before uh, your exam having more money to buy stuffs require working larger uh, hours if you want to buy a big house if you want to buy a bigger uh, car if you want to have expensive clothings then you need more money how do you generate more money you have to work more and if you work more as we already told all of us are entitled with 24 hours of time okay out of which 6 7 or 8 hours we will be sleeping rest only we can either work or we can take leisure leisure means you can either stay at home spend some time with your family or go for a vacation okay so more time for work means you have less time available for leisure that is why you are facing a trade off whether to enjoy your life at home or you want to earn more income which requires more time allocated in the labor market this is a trade off now if you want to protect the environment then that also requires some amount of resources okay you need to have advanced technologies right you need to have uh more labor allocated uh, for those activities and those resources are then not available for producing consumer goods so that means whether you go for clean environment or whether you go for more consumer uh, uh, goods there is also a trade off we cannot achieve both the things together because resource is again limited society sometimes also face a trade off between efficiency and equality okay efficiency and equality see efficiency means we need to allocate the resources so that we get maximum satisfaction out of that now when the society gets the most from its scarce resources that means efficiency is achieved and what is equality when the prosperity that means the size of the economic pie the output that you produce is distributed uniformly among all the society's members now one thing we have to clearly keep in mind in economics if you want to achieve efficiency then goods and services should be produced by those producers who are cost effective and goods should also be consumed by those who value them maximum but then the question is how do you know who is valuing the product maximum you leave the product in the market market will decide who is valuing the maximum because that customer will pay more for a particular product all of us want mercedes benz but all of us are not valuing the product in the same way so if you leave the product in market market 
will decide who should actually buy the product using its single most instrument called price. But if you want to have equality, then whatever you produce, you must equally divide among all the citizens living in a society. That is not an efficient allocation because without considering who is valuing how much, I am uniformly and equally distributing the, all the goods and services among all the citizens. And in that way, we cannot actually have efficiency. Okay? Sometimes we keep reservations for different posts and that is not efficient allocation. So what we feel that we must reserve some uh, uh, seats for some posts and we should give to the people in our society who have less resources uh, to, to enter into the market. So if you allow the market to operate in each and every aspects, they cannot come into the mainstream. That is why we must have some reservations. That means efficiency and equality, society faces a trade-off. We cannot achieve both the things uh, together. So to achieve greater equality, what we do, we could redistribute income from wealthier person to the poorer person. Okay? We take income tax in the form of tax, we generate money from the wealthier person, we give it to the poorer sections in the form of subsidy or direct cash transfer, whatever might be the mechanism. But in that way, the more tax you impose on the wealthier person, then they will feel they will have less incentives to work more. And if they do not work, then size of the economic pie will come down. Right? So, to have equality, we must generate income. And how do government generate income? Government actually impose tax on the wealthier people. When you work and generate money, then some part of your income must be paid as income tax or sales tax, whatever. And that money should be spent on the poorer sections and providing infrastructure, so on and so forth. But then the question is, if the wealthier persons are taxed, then they feel less incentive to work more. And if they work less, then less output is produced, size of the economic pie shrinks. Then this is second principle. Second principle is the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Okay. This is again related to the first principle. In the first principle, what we discussed that people face trade off. That means we cannot achieve both the things together. Studying principles of economics for one hour means that one hour you cannot study engineering physics. So that means we must realize that all our decision involves some amount of cost. When we are studying principles of economics, we must think that I am facing a trade-off. This one hour of time I could have spent for studying engineering physics or I could have spent for management accounting. Then economists say that you must calculate the cost of studying principles of economics in terms of what you are sacrificing and that is called opportunity cost. Okay? Opportunity cost. So, opportunity cost of studying economics is basically I can define in terms of engineering physics. Okay? Now, the question is that one hour of time I can spend for several activities. I can study engineering physics, I can study mathematics, I can uh, study financial accounting, so on and so forth. Then which particular subject to I should I take to calculate the opportunity cost of studying principles of economics? Economists, they say, while calculating opportunity cost, 
you must consider what is your next best alternative. Okay? So, opportunity cost is always calculated, please keep in mind, in terms of your next best alternative. If you feel my next best alternative is engineering physics in terms of grade what you are expecting from that particular subject or in terms of your learning outcome, then I should consider only engineering physics to calculate the opportunity cost of studying principles of economics. I cannot calculate opportunity cost for each and every subject that I could have studied. Is this clear? Suppose a farmer is having a particular piece of land where the farmer is producing paddy. And now I want to calculate the farmer's opportunity cost of cultivating paddy. That particular piece of land the farmers could have used for producing potato or tomato or onion or maize or soybean, so on and so forth. There are so many other crops the farmers could have produced if not paddy. Okay? Then the question is how do you calculate opportunity cost of cultivating paddy? Then the farmer must think what is my next best alternative? Suppose wheat is the next best alternative, then opportunity cost should of paddy should be calculated in terms of wheat. Okay? So, the cost of something is what you give up to get it. So, that means what is the best thing that you could have done that you must take into consideration while calculating opportunity cost. So, making decisions requires comparing the costs and benefits of alternative choices and that is why the opportunity cost of any item is whatever must be given up to obtain it. Okay? So, it is relevant. It is the relevant cost for decision making. Unless we realize there is an opportunity cost, we cannot take best decision. Right? Now, there are some examples of opportunity cost. Suppose you are going to a college for an extra year. Okay? Now, we need to calculate what is the opportunity cost of going for one extra year to the college. For example, after your uh, let us say BE or BTech or graduation degree, you have two options. Either to go for a management degree for another two hours or to work. So, you are facing a trade off. That is why studying one extra year involves some amount of cost. What you are sacrificing? Generally, we think that cost of going for one extra year is basically tuition, books, fees and the food what we take. Okay? So, when you are calculating the cost of one extra year, what do you take? You take what is the admission fees? What is the money that you need to spend for books? What is the money that you need to spend for clothing, so on and so forth. But we must realize not everything should be included here and something else should also be added here. Two important things, the rent what you pay for staying, the food what you take, the clothing what you wear during that extra one year should not be included. because. Even if you do not go for one extra year for management studies, you must have some food, you must have some place to sleep, you must wear some clothes. Then that those expenses are not very specific for your one extra year of studying. Then you should not include that. Rather, what you should include is actually apart from your tuition books and fees, the two years of your time that you are going to spend for management studies, that two years of your time you could have spent 
working somewhere and that way you would have earned some money. So, that means the foregone salary or wages in the last, in these two years, that should also be included while calculating the opportunity cost of studying one extra or two extra years to get your management degree. Okay. Similarly, seeing a movie is not just the price of the ticket, but the value of your time. Okay. Value of the time, that same amount of time you could have done something else. Right. Okay. So, I would like to introduce one more concept here related to opportunity cost is another important cost that economists says these are sunk cost. See, when you go for a movie, before taking the decision, what you are thinking? You are calculating opportunity cost. How you are calculating? The price of the ticket and the value of your time. But once you buy the ticket and enter into the theater, suppose many a times we feel that the movie is not interesting. What we should do? Just because we spend, uh, we, we purchase the ticket, we should not think that we should continue keep watching the movie even if it is not worth watching it further. So, the cost which was opportunity cost before taking the decision, once you enter into the theater, then it becomes a sunk cost. That means, there is no way you can get it back. So, while opportunity cost should guide your decision, sunk cost should not because that is already gone. You, if you feel the movie is not interesting, then actually you should come out of the movie theater. That way at least you can save your time because value of your time is also there in the cost calculation. So, that time you could have spent with your friends or doing something else. Similarly, suppose you are taking a project. Before taking a project, you are calculating the opportunity cost of a particular project. So, let us say it is 50,000. And then you should also take care of what else you could have done spending that 50,000 rupees. Everything taken together, you are calculating opportunity cost of a project. That should guide you whether to go for that project or not. But suppose once the project is halfway through, you have already spent some amount of money, you feel this project is not going to be successful. And that happens many a times. Because every project involves some amount of forecasting about the future. Once you start your project, then you realize, my God, things are going to happen in a way that I have not expected. Then what we should do? Just because you have already spent some amount of money in the project, you should not continue it knowing that it is not going to be successful. Because the money already spent means those costs become now sunk. Sunk cost is irrelevant. You should get out of the project. That way, you can minimize your further loss and time and energy. So, while the cost is opportunity cost before you start the project, it becomes sunk once you spend the money. Okay? So, while opportunity cost should be guiding your decision, sunk cost should not. Because sunk cost means this cost is already gone. There is no way I can get it back. So, I should not further invest in that particular project knowing that it is not going to be successful. Right? 